Welcome to the Relax Into Love podcast, the place for spiritual, ambitious women to awaken to divine connection within themselves and their partner and manifest their most desired relationship with joy and ease. I'm Teal Elizabeth, your host, a spiritual love and relationship coach trained in the principles of feminine energy, NLP, and deep subconscious reprogramming. And through this podcast, it is my desire to inspire you on all things dating, relationships, and self-love. Now, on to the show. Welcome back, ladies, to the Relax Into Love podcast. I'm your host, Teal Elizabeth, and I hope you guys are having a fabulous start to your week. I know I am. It's been a lot of ups and downs lately, but at the end of the day, coming back home to what matters most, just coming back home to ourself and the connection to self. And today I have a really, really fun podcast that I'm going to be sharing with you. This is actually a, a featured interview that I'm doing on another coach's podcast called Om Talkies um, with the lovely Krupa B. And we're going to be talking about gender roles and gender stereotypes and how really we as women can step into an evolved relationship and evolved partnership with our partner, with men, that can just really let go of some of these ideas and stereotypes and conditions that we have been, I think, imbibing for way too long when it comes to relationships. It's a super, super juicy episode. And make sure to stay till the end because I have a very special invite at the end for any of you that want to just explore this concept and this uh, this topic deeper. So uh, with that, I will let Krupa take it away and enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Own Talkies podcast. I am Krupa B, founder of Alpha Hearts Life Coaching. I am so excited to start off my podcast series with introducing various life coaches in the area of relationships, spirituality, self-development, holistic wellness, and living, and to you, and to talk about their journey and their story and what has made them take this path to be of support to other individuals. Today's topic is Evolved and Spiritual Partnership. With this topic, I am introducing the founder of Relax Into Love, the one and only Teal Elizabeth. She is a professionally trained relationship coach. After being single for over eight years and going through numerous dating struggles and heartbreaks, she became determined to master this area of her life. Today, she's happily co-creating a deeply soul-nourishing spiritual partnership with her fiance for the last seven years while traveling the world as a nomadic entrepreneur. In a world that sees a shift with men and women becoming equal partners, she has helped thousands of strong and ambitious business women who struggle to create a connection within themselves and with men. Welcome to my podcast, Teal. Thank you so much, Krupa. It's so great to be here. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's start off by talking about your becoming. How did you come about becoming a love and a relationship coach? Oh, yes. Such an interesting conversation. You know, I actually never thought that this would be what I would be end up doing. I studied biology in college and thought I was going to save the sea turtles. <laughs> Still going to save the sea turtles through a different source, but um, really my heart and soul has just been driven and, and drawn to personal development work. It's been something I've been studying for over 15 years, just as a hobby and a side project. And over time, you know, as I was going through my own self-development and growth journeys, I realized like, this is really my passion <laughs> more than biology. This is my passion. And I think, you know, they, they often say that your mess is your message. And I very much had a lot of challenges with dating and relationships when I was younger. And so it became something that I was just driven to figure out and master. And once I was able to really, really understand this very elusive idea of love, um, I just knew that this was something that I had to step forward as a role model for modern day women and help them with the same. So what triggered this journey for you? What, what was it that made you think this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? Mm. Yeah, well, it really started with me hiring a relationship coach myself. 
and uh, and really going on that journey and recognizing, wow, maybe I don't have it all together. Maybe there's actually some things that I need to learn about myself and how I'm showing up in relationships that's actually either sabotaging or keeping me from being able to have this area of my life so fulfilled. And when I was able to make that massive shift from, like you said, being single for eight years to now being in this so fulfilling, you know, engagement of of a relationship, um, it just was this thing that I knew that this was a powerful message and powerful teachings that I needed to share with others. And it's been so fulfilling ever since. Wow. Okay. What, what do you feel that, um, has evolved within you and what is it that makes you feel like you can um, um, help others evolve themselves and bring their best foot, put their best foot forward in a relationship plus at the same time taking care of themselves? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is something that's really interesting, Krupa, and why I'm so glad that we're talking about this whole concept because I think what really hit home for me was when I started to realize that we are in a very new, uncharted territory as women today in the modern world, right? Like, we are no longer 1950s housewives, right? And we're not burning our bras and, like, trying to gain equality. Like, we, for the most part, have really stepped up. And women's empowerment has just been such a beautiful, beautiful, powerful presence um, in this modern day. But what I've realized through my own experiences and from also just observing and studying, you know, this this concept for a long time is that that bringing this kind of power and this presence, it's, it's a very masculine energy and it's a very kind of leaning forward, proving ourselves, wanting to just show the world that we don't need anyone and we can take care of ourselves. And when we bring that energy into relationships, it can really backfire and it can really cause a lot of friction in relationships because at the end of the day, if we are a woman that is looking for that beautiful chivalrous romantic gentleman man we don't want to be showing up as the man in the relationship because we're not making any space for the man to be the man in the relationship but that's what i see happening and that's what i saw myself falling into in the past which is just such an eye-opening moment of like whoa maybe i've actually been wearing the pants in the relationship and maybe i need to figure out how to shift more into my feminine essence so that I can make that balance and restore that harmony um, for my man to step forward and be able to become in more of that, like like I said, that um, spiritual partnership. Now now that you talk about it, I'm curious to know what is it that, what is the balance that you feel can bring about, you know, bringing about a female energy into the relationship plus having to be independent because in you know like you said in the 1970s or the 1950s um, men were supposed to be um the bread bread earner of the family and women are supposed to be like housewives taking care of the family be more nurturing and taking care of the kids but Nowadays, women want equal partnership in terms of knowing how to be independent. They want to stand up uh, for what they can bring to the table. They want to bring their talents to the table. They want to have a career. They want to be financially independent. At the same time, what do you see is a good energy balance between being such a strong female um, and also bringing that nurturing um, you know, fulfilling female energy into the relationship. What is it that the relationship in today's world is looking at? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely this balance between masculine and feminine energy. And I think just even having the awareness and having this beautiful conversation about what is masculine energy and am I being too much in my masculine energy, right? It's a, that's the first big shift for women is recognizing, okay, Maybe I don't have to be that go-getter badass in the relationship. Maybe I can actually relax into a different side of my essence and my being so that I can actually truly create spaciousness for this relationship to bloom. Because I think for a lot of women, you know, we, like I said, we bring that go-getter energy like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'll have a goal. I want to date this many men. I want to achieve this. Uh, marriage by this date. So let me just like put my project plan together and let me make it happen. Right. But we can't, we can't do that with relationships. It's an organic process. And so I think just the first 
Sorry. Sorry. Cut you off. My thought at this point is being a go-getter, do you think that's more of a masculine energy? Then? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do. I guess, yeah, that's a good conversation to have. But I think, you know, this idea of strategizing and planning and controlling and wanting to feel in control can oftentimes you know, be a backlash in how men receive that because to them it's looking like you are, um, you are trying to push the relationship forward. And I think for a really beautiful harmony to, to be created in a relationship, we have to make space for the man to feel safe to be the man. And I think gender roles, although they're very questioned right now, they, they still play a really important balance. Whatever kind of relationship gender roles you want to step into, but I think for many, you know, heterosexual women specifically looking for a masculine man, we need to learn how to step into this feminine identity. And this is a lot about what I talk about with women is like, what is this feminine identity and how do we really get to redefine what it means to be a woman in this modern day? You know, I think a lot of women, they think about feminine energy and they think, well, I don't want to be seen as weak. I don't want to be, you know, emotional and needy and clingy. And, and that's what they associate with being feminine. And what I'm here to say is that that is not true femininity. That is what I would consider more toxic femininity. But real true femininity is when I awoke into this realization, it was just like, oh my gosh, I feel like there's this whole other side of my being that I had never even explored, right? Because we only ever are thought and taught to operate in that kind of go-getter, prove ourselves mentality. But there is this whole other side to your being that is soft and gentle and warm and alluring and magnetic and seductive and juicy and just connected to her heart, right? And connected to her emotions, but in an objective way where she's able to communicate that in a healthy way. And from that space, we really get to create the space for there to be a really beautiful equal partnership without having to do too much or, or outshine our man. Okay. And now that you speak about it, do you feel like men also have some kind of, you know, um, blocks that you feel like, you know, just because now the roles in the modern world is all about equality, do you think men are able to bring about their feminine side into the relationship and be be com comfortable with that and be able to talk about that with their partners and be able to be themselves with their partners? And... Um, the reason that I am asking you this is I know you, you help a lot of women, but um, what about the men? Mm, my sweet men. Oh, my heart goes out to all the men of today and they're just absolute sweethearts. And I think, I think right now men are really afraid to be men. They don't feel safe to truly be men because there's a lot of criticism around masculinity but I think that there is, just as there's toxic femininity, there is toxic masculinity, right? And I think a lot of times we're attacking the toxic masculine qualities, but we're not celebrating the beautiful masculine qualities that men bring to the table. And so, yes, I do think that they can drop into more of those feminine qualities around connecting to their emotions, being emotionally intelligent and speaking from their heart and being vulnerable. But it really takes us as women to hold that space and make it feel safe for them to really go into their hearts. Because and I think that's one of the beautiful gifts. Women. Sorry, say that again. Because the movement of women equality has all started by women. And so now we need to make the men feel safe, too, in yes. the same movement. Okay. percent. A hundred percent. Because up until now, it's just been like, forget men, we don't need them, like, we're fine, right? And and that's not the case. Like, the, the future of relationships need to be a place where both genders feel safe to be seen and acknowledged. And if we are coming into relationships being like, you, you got to prove yourself to me, and I'm not going to put up with crap, and, you know, like, I don't need you, there's just spikes coming out. There's spikes, energetic spikes coming out of us that where they don't feel safe to be able to really drop into their heart. So yes, they absolutely can. And that's such a beautiful quality to be able to evoke within them. But we need to be able to release those spikes within ourselves and drop into our hearts in our beautiful strength 
and let them feel safe to do the same. Okay. So what do you feel about, um, you know, spiritual relationship and growing together? So what does that look like in today's relationships? Yes. Yeah. So this has been a concept I've been really just like meditating on a lot. It's been coming to me a lot of meditation and I really see it as being a beautiful evolution of where we get to take relationships for the future. And that's something I really want to drive and step into for the future as a, a love coach is talking about this concept. And when I say spiritual part partnership, I'm not talking about anything religious. I'm not talking about anything like crazy woo woo. I'm just talking about creating the spaciousness and looking at relationships as the opportunity to grow within ourselves and actually having relationships be that beautiful incubator for both people in the relationship to continue to evolve and grow. Because in my eyes, that is the meaning of life. That is why we're here on this earth is to continue to grow our souls and learn through experience and learn through people. And so when we find that beautiful counterpart, that twin flame, if you want to call it, to really be able to be that perfect match and harmony for us, it can actually do so much more than just having someone to share the everyday with or watch Netflix with. It's actually someone that can be there as a reflector and as a trigger and as a guide to help you grow on your journey for the rest of your life. So what does um, the growth between the relationship look like in this kind of spiritual um, relationship? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's going to be different for every person. Um, it's first off, just really making sure that this is one, something that you really want for your relationship. Not everyone is obsessed with personal growth like I am. But, <laughs> um, and that's fine. That's totally fine. But for women that are in love with growing and evolving and wanting to be in a partnership uh, that has that as, a, as an element to it, I think it really, I, I talk about it as being like a DNA spiral where literally it kind of comes in and then goes out and comes in and goes out, constantly stretching and expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting. And so in some moments, you guys will be super in line and everything will just feel like it's just fit and harmony and just flow and just like, wow, life is just cloud nine, right? And then there'll be other moments where it's going to pull apart and you're going to be like, oh crap, this relationship's falling apart. What's going on? But the whole point of it is that you have to expand and contract to be able to continue to grow your own soul. And so if you can find a partner that is also willing and ready and able to go on that journey of self-growth for themselves, it can be a really beautiful platform for both people to be able to harmonize in this journey together. What advice would you give for people who are going through the, you know, the, the contraction or you know, the misalignment in the relationship at the present moment. Like, given our current situation with the pandemic, um, I'm sure being in close quarters with your spouse is sometimes wonderful, and at the same time, it can be like, oh my gosh, I need you to get out of my hair for like two seconds. And what does that look like? How would we navigate, you know, the 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 misalignment part of relationship yeah yeah that's that's a part that's a very very tricky for sure um and i think it first starts out with making sure that both people are truly filling up their own cups right because the last thing that we want in a relationship is is that codependency where we are trying to fill the void within each other and we can't grow as individuals if we are filling each other's voids so in those moments of misalignment, sometimes it can feel like, oh gosh, I feel like we're drifting apart. But if you can recognize that, no, this is actually a beautiful stage for us to just completely double down on our own self, right? And continue to fill up our own cup and make our own self happy. I think that's the, the biggest thing to, to put attention on in those moments and trusting that because it's pulling apart doesn't mean that you guys are growing apart. It just means that you guys are moving into the newer versions of the selves that you need to be. And I think that the biggest part here that, that keeps that together on this, this DNA spiral versus just drifting apart for good is just having that healthy communication throughout it, right? And saying, hey, I, I feel a little disconnected from you. I feel a little distant, but I just want to let you know I'm taking time to make sure that I'm really taking care of myself and I want to make sure you're doing the same. And let's make sure that we're being intentional about sharing 
what we're going through together so that we can continue to show up and support each other in that journey. And then when you're able to do that, then that's where you can able to meet each other at the top, right? Meet each other at the top of that growth and come back together into that new sweet spot that can be even more replenishing and fulfilling than it was down here. Definitely. I completely okay. agree with you on the communication, which seems to be the key to unlocking any relationship, right? Not just spiritual, not just, um, you know, mother, daughter, father, son kind of, I feel like every relationship needs this open communication. So my, my thought is not everyone, not everybody is, is so openly expressive about their feelings and are able to communicate. So how do we navigate that? How do we cultivate that kind of habits? Or how do we cultivate that kind of, you know, growth mindset where we just don't give up as soon as, you know, there is a hurdle on the road? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you ask the question again? Because it was kind of glitching in and out. So I didn't quite catch it, (laughs) the question. (laughs) So I was saying that how do we cultivate a habit of being in that growth mindset? Because communication not necessarily comes very easily to too many. You know, even even for me in the beginning of my relationship, I remember I was not uh, very expressive. I was... um, I was never taught to speak openly about my feelings and I just used to assume that you know my my better half my partner knows what I'm thinking or feels what I'm feeling but I don't see that really happening it's 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 actually insane to actually um, expect that of another human being to be able to read your mind and feel your feelings so how do we cultivate that habit for people who are not openly able to express their feelings. Mm, Such a good point, Krupa, absolutely. Yeah, I think it all starts with first being comfortable with even having feelings, right? If we have been, and I I agree, I was very much taught that way too. It's like, it feels weird to be vulnerable if you haven't ever practiced being vulnerable. Is it cutting out? Can you repeat? It was a glitch. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. It it feels uncomfortable being vulnerable if we've never ever actually taught how to be vulnerable or if we're not shown that that is what you're supposed to do. And so a lot of times we can feel really disconnected from even knowing what we're feeling. And so I would really encourage for anyone that's struggling with like having some conflict and not knowing how to communicate it is first just checking in of asking yourself, how am I actually feeling right now? And before going into the conversation and just dumping the feelings onto them, give yourself some time to process it, journal through it, or call a friend and talk through it and be able to let that emotion out and let those feelings out and see if you can get to the deeper truth. Because emotions really are messengers and they're trying to communicate a message to you and a truth to you. And so when we can really embrace emotions, instead of shoving them down or pushing them away as these icky things... If we can embrace them and say, what are you trying to tell me right now? What is the deeper truth here? Then we can process out the the energy and come into the conversation with the truth. And I feel like that is a much stronger way to be able to communicate your emotions from that place of vulnerability, but still having the strength. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. I want to um, see if we can talk a little bit about your own background on how you struggled with your past relationship and what have you learned and how you have made those changes to being in uh, love again and being able to find your soulmate, being able to find the love of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I guess going back yeah, to early days, I mean, like I said, I, I was, um, I've always been passionate about self-development. And even after college, I went to Thailand and I studied with Buddhist monks and truly had a five day silent meditation retreat where I just went within, I blocked out the external world and just started to really understand this whole dynamic between our mind and our heart and ego and attachment 
And I came out of that experience just having such a grounded sense of who I was. And I came back to the United States and I started climbing the corporate ladder and I was just doing all the things, checking all the boxes, right? Just being that ambitious go-getter that many of us are. And, but I realized that my love life was really, really struggling. And this went on for a series of eight years where I literally call it the hook and fizzle. I was, I'd allure men in with this allure of being this independent go-getter. And then a few months into dating me, I would get excited and I'd be like, oh my God, I think I like them, right? And I would turn into this other version of myself, or I would try and just shove down all the feelings and be cool and pretend I didn't care and didn't like them. And they would dump me. They would dump me or it would fizzle out every time like clockwork, like a pattern for eight years. And it was really, really frustrating because I knew I had so much love in my heart to give. And I was such a a great person, right? But for some reason, I could never get a man to stick around. And it was really, really devastating. And especially, you know, I, I remember there being a time when I had written this whole love letter to this guy and I just poured out my heart to him and I sent it to him. And the next day he called me and dumped me because of it. And I just remember just being so frustrated and so confused. Like, how am I supposed to do this, right? Like, I can't hold back my feelings because that doesn't work. But apparently pouring out my feelings isn't working either. So, like, what do I do? And it really took me, like I said, just recognizing maybe I need support with this, you know? And and overcoming that ego of, like, that's a weakness, asking for support is a weakness because it's not a weakness. It's a huge strength to say, I need help. Right. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of women. It's just not needing to be that martyr (laughs) and honestly asking for help and support. Um, And in that time, when I was able to work with that coach, she really helped me to see those sides of myself that I couldn't see and the way that I was showing up in relationships and really guarding my heart And once I was able to work through those defenses and those blocks, I was able to step into this new version of me, this this feminine goddess of me that I I had been suppressing for so long for fear of judgment, right? And literally within weeks, the man that I had had my eye on, who we'd just been friends for years, he asked me out and we started dating for the next year. And it's just been such an incredible relationship up until that point. And now we're engaged and traveling the world. Yeah. <laughs> and running this beautiful, beautiful company that I call Relax Into Love. Wonderful. I, I love the way that you spoke about, you know, how you go into a pattern. And I feel like many of us, Many individuals go into that pattern and never really even realize it. It's 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 fantastic that you were able to recognize that and come to a conclusion that I do need help. So how does an individual actually pinpoint their patterns and say, this is a pattern. I think I need help from a relationship coach. What is it that you look for what is it that an individual needs to look for in their relationship that goes on as patterns that um, make that would make them you know pick up the call or uh, go into the internet or find a relationship coach and say I need help. Mm, yeah, I think it's something that you just have to bring a little bit of awareness to and just take a moment to pause and reflect and journal a little bit and ask yourself, have I been in a pattern? Have I noticed that there's been a series of men that I've attracted that all seem to have a similar theme? And usually there is. And that's when you know that this is not about them. It's actually about you. (laughs) As tough as that is to admit, it's important to have that awareness because otherwise you're just going to stay in that pattern and it's never going to be broken through, right? And the universe keeps us in these patterns until we learn the lesson. But when we learn the lesson, then we are able to break through of it. And we can literally shift into an entirely different experience. And I'm able to say that so confidently because I've done that for myself. I'm literally living a dream life that I never thought was possible 10 years ago. And I've been able to hold space for, yeah, tons and tons of women to be able to do the same. It really can be quick, but we have to just give ourselves the time to really go deeper and reflect and think about it for ourselves. 
um, and then make that choice to change. Wow. And you have come up with courses that help women, um, you know, deal with these kind of patterns, correct? Yes, yes. I have a phenomenal course that I call the Relax Into Love Master Course. And this is something that takes you on the six-step journey that I feel are the biggest principles to helping women really learn how to relax into love and step into that feminine goddess essence that they really have within them that maybe they've been suppressing, like I talked about. Um, and that's something that, yeah, it's just been such a beautiful birthing from and culmination from my own experience and from working with women and from pulling from, you know, the spiritual aspect with the Buddhist monks and then my time working at Uber in San Francisco and just bringing it all together into something that I feel is a really nice step-by-step path. Because I think with something like love, it feels so elusive, right? Sometimes it can feel like we're just like fumbling around in the dark of this tunnel or this maze and we don't, we're just bumping into walls and we don't know how to get out of it. Right. (laughs) And it's just like, I want to be that woman for, for other women to say, take my hand. Here's the flashlight. Here's the roadmap. Come with me. I've got you. And that's what I feel like this course is. So tell me how long is this course and what would an individual or women, um, look for or what what is the end goal that she can for sure be guaranteed at the end of this course yeah for me it's all about raising yourself up to the highest vibration that you can be as a woman to attract in that kind of man that you want because the way i look at it is you know at some point if we have some sort of pattern that we're stuck in or some sort of insecurities or some sort of emotional baggage that we've been carrying we're operating at actually a lower frequency where we are just kind of we're down here and we're naturally attracting men that also have some sort of insecurity or emotional baggage right that just matches as a perfect low vibe frequency together And we can't even see anything else besides that in the men that we date and the men that come toward us because that is the energetic frequency that we're putting out to the world. And so through this course, the whole goal is to help women to raise up their frequency so that they're able to truly step into being that highest version, highest caliber frequency woman that they are so they can naturally just can't help but attract an entirely different caliber of man. And I do this through what I'm now calling relationship energetics. It really is such an energetic shift that happens over the course of this course and learning the tools of how do I really drop into my heart, get out of my head, get out of the anxiety and the mind chatter, and really start to get comfortable with vulnerability as a strength and as a tool to create intimacy. So that's really what this is all about. So it is mostly this this course is based on, you know, removing all the blocks for the women and self-development, self-awareness and helping them understand where they're um, either going wrong or straying away from what their heart's desires are and talk about or bring their vibrational high enough to where they should be or where they actually are. Is that right? Yes. You know, and it's interesting because I think a lot of women will probably be listening to this and be like, well, I'm already a high vibe woman. I'm already high caliber. I know I'm, I'm high frequency. I just can't meet the right guys. Right. And so I very much hear that. And I very much was that way too, but being that way in, in careers or in family or in friends is still a different dynamic than it is in relationships. And I think that's a big distinction to recognize is we can have it all together in every other life area of our life, but being that high frequency, high high value queen in relationships does take intention and it does take some some work to learn the tools. And I don't really feel like we've ever really been taught that, right? We're not ever taught that. So just as we go to school to learn how to be in a good career, we have to go to school to learn how to be in a good relationship. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely true because we as women who are striving for equality have definitely learned how to be career women and independent women and financially stable women. And um, on the other hand, we are struggling to find love and we are struggling to find connection, which is amazing that you're doing this course. So that way there is a place that all women can go to and 
you know, make sure that they are learning about themselves, self-awareness for the relationship that they want to attract. That's yeah. awesome. What yeah. do you see as a future for relationships? Do you think like it's going to evolve into being more spiritual or is this going to be more of partnerships? You know what I mean? Like business partnership. You do this and I do this and this is your strength. This is my strength. And we bring that together and, um, you know, come about to becoming a family? Or do you think, like, it's it's more tending towards being in, um, you know, deeply connected way or deeply spiritual and having to grow together, become old together, learn about each other and give space to each other? So what do you think is the future of relationships? Well, I definitely hope for the second. And I think most women hope for the second, right? We all want that deep, intimate connection with someone who just truly sees us and, and unapologetically accepts us for who we are. Um, but I really will say that I think it's really up to the individual. And I think the most important thing is to really just take a second to recognize that you really can create whatever kind of relationship you want. And I think that's one of the beauties of this modern day, too, is we are redefining every kind of relationship and every kind of connection and identity with ourself. And so it gets to be a really beautiful dynamic journey that you get to create. And I don't think that maybe people realize that is enough, right? But one of the biggest things and one of the first lessons of the course is about really creating the vision and thinking about what, if I could wave my wand, what would it really look like? What would it feel like to be in this dynamic relationship with my, my dream partner. And I think, you know, a lot of women don't even allow themselves to dream and don't even let themselves go there in that little girl sense, right? If I want my Prince Charming, like we don't even let ourselves go there because we don't want to be disappointed. And what I will say is the men that you want are out there and they want you and they want to give to you and they want to provide for you and all the things that you could dream up. Like there are men out there that want that. And the first time I heard that, I was like, Psh, no, like, come on, get with it. Like, this is, this is not <laughs> the modern day right now. But then it happened for me. And I was like, holy crap. Oh, my God. She's right. It happened. And so that's just what I want to remind each of you too. like, allow yourself to really dream. Allow yourself to create whatever it is that you want. And there will be some, some constriction there when you get to that point of dreaming because those fears are going to want to hold you back and tell you it's not possible. And that's where I just want to come in with a big hammer and just shatter that ceiling because it's not true. It's just what we've been adopted and, and conditioned to think that we should want. So I think that the future for relationships can be whatever we want it to be, but I'm really hoping and I'm leading the charge in creating very nourishing, nourishing soul connection with partners. How do you see the um, dating life happening with the pandemic? Like what is the one thing that you would say to the women who are at home now looking for a relationship or put their finding relationship on hold their dating scenes on hold because they can no longer go to openly date anymore because of the pandemic they can't like really be um you know face to face or or touching each other because that fear of the pandemic is, is luring all around us how is it that we can navigate this yeah this is a crazy, crazy world we're in this year. Um, and I actually did a whole podcast episode on this, the social distancing and dating. And um, one of the biggest things that I shared in this is well, two part. This is a huge blessing in disguise. And I'm going to totally come in with a silver lining because that's what I do. <laughs> this is a huge blessing and in disguise because first off, Never before have we had the chance to just give ourselves more spaciousness in our life to actually go within ourselves and reflect and think and do the work on ourselves to prepare ourselves to make sure that we're really ready to be in that beautiful, healthy relationship, right? Many, many people, they go into the, just the, the motions of dating and dating and dating, but they don't actually take that pause for themselves to just be like, okay, wait a second. 
Do I have any patterns that are showing up, right? Do I have any blocks that are showing up? Is there any baggage that I haven't cleared through? Now's the time, girl. Now's the time, <laughs> right? So that's the first beautiful blessing. And the second part of it is there's just because we can't physically be with each other or, yeah, we want to limit how much exposure and, and physical contact we have doesn't mean that we have to stop dating altogether. And there has actually been a surge in dating sites right now with people moving online and maybe even men that used to not go online because that's really the main way of getting to connect. So there are all these amazing eligible bachelors that are now ready to go <laughs> and ready to connect. And on top of it, it really is creating the spaciousness to not have to worry about, oh God, when do I sleep with him? And when do I have my first kiss? And all that kind of stuff. It just allows you to really deepen into, ah, oh, okay, I get to just connect with him. I get to really learn about him. We get to develop a friendship. We get to develop a deeper um, soul connection and heart to heart connection first before exploring the physical. And I think that that can be such another beautiful, beautiful blessing for this time right now. So if any of you are feeling in the doldrums about being at home and not being able to date, that would be my, my two pieces of advice for you and just kind of lifting you up because this can be used to your advantage if you let it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, yeah. Teal. It was wonderful chatting with you today. I, um, I wish all of you should go check out Teal's website, Relax Into Love, and look for the course that she has been developing and running. I think that's a wonderful course that anyone could take in today's world and just to learn about themselves and be vulnerable to themselves for self-awareness goes a long way. And thank you so much for your contribution to this world that we are living in right now teal it is amazing that you have found your love it is such a blessing that people like you are helping support the women of today thank you thank you krupa and i wanted to share too you know if women are interested in this course i actually have a free training that i'm going to be running um, and i'll leave a link at the bottom here and i'm calling it the three critical mistakes keeping you from love that lasts and this is something where I'm going to be actually talking through the three most common mistakes that many, many women make when they're trying to fall in love and stay in love and how you can really move through that and make sure that you're not falling into those traps and also posing six really powerful questions to really help you think deeper and reflect on where you're at in your love life. And then at the end, I'll be inviting whoever wants to go further to go into the course. So if anyone's interested in that, I highly recommend registering for that training. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Phil. That's amazing. All you women out there should go and check that out. That is super awesome. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you for your time and energy today. And thank you for being a part of this podcast. Thank Come you, Krupa. Bye. Bye.